Picture this, if you will. A darkened room. The haunting smell of gamer sweat. A human, hands shaking, putting down their controller and fist pumping the air as the soul of Cinder falls dead and Lord of Cinder Fallen flashes across a flickering TV screen. The human is you, and you have, of course, just completed From Software's 2016 classic Dark Souls 3. Your Dark Souls journey is over. You sigh with relief and draw back the curtains to let the outside world seep into your filthy hobbit hole before heading to Reddit to brag about your hollow victory. All is good with the world until you see a reply to your Reddit post. But what about the DLCs? You need to do them to complete a story. Well, okay, yeah, fine, Mr. Pedantic. So there are DLCs for this game, and apparently it has a story too. Great, more pain. But what the hell are they all about? Before we get into all that, a quick message from this video's sponsor, Barry the Psycho Puppet. Barry isn't actually paying me, but if you don't like and subscribe, he says he'll shit in my cutlery drawer. So please don't make him angry, I need to eat. You start the first DLC by heading to the Cleansing Chapel, where you meet stupid sexy Uncle Gale, a creepy old thought who thrusts his butt in the air at you and asks you to stroke his lady's soiled panties. So you give them a quick rub, but whoops, Gale lied. It was actually part of a painting and you've just been sucked inside it like a chomp. Fool me once, etc. Now you're here, you might as well explore Cocaine Wonderland. So you pop on your thermal socks and trudge through the snow, past the guys doing the ghost chili challenge, avoiding Dick Wolf Valley. Yes, that is the second time I've made a Dick Wolf joke in a vid. Running away from Crack Pooch and the Angry Vikings, because let's be honest, everyone just runs through this DLC to get to the good bit as fast as possible, and resting at a bonfire to toast some marshmallows. Across a suspiciously rickety bridge, you reach a chapel, where a man who sounds like he's stuck inside a washing machine growls at you seductively wow. while you ignore him and head on in. Inside the chapel, you meet Sister Fried Egg for the first time, another ashen one like you who has chosen to live inside the painting. She bribes you with a ring and then gives you the cold shoulder and tells you to piss off, so you go and vandalise a bridge in anger. Good thing you did that, because now you get to park all your way down a cluster of tree branches, skillfully avoiding all the enemy attacks to reach the bottom. I said skillfully avoiding for fuck's sake. Who writes this crappy script anyway? You rest up and go and get pancaked by some crabs just for fun before jumping down into an enticing field of flowers that totally isn't an obvious boss arena where you meet Russell Crowe who shouts, are you not entertained? before you slap his dumb ass to oblivion. Overwhelmed, he's all like, Say hello to my little friend! Just to completely confuse the whole movie reference thing, and Crack Pooch drops in again for round three. There's no running away this time, so you wait for him to stop chasing his own tail like an idiot and hack him into small angry pieces. Nicely done. Now, you can head past the overly affectionate Christmas trees and climb the ladder and keep climbing the ladder and climb the ladder some more and fucking hell, how long is this piece of crap ladder? Are we at the top yet? Yes. Oh good. Wait, what? There's another ladder? Are you actually shitting me? You ask the boys if they want to come surfing with you and they politely decline. So you make your way past Bondage Wolverine and climb up into the Corvian settlement. Here, you meet this fine specimen of a man. His noble posture reminds me of me, sat here making these videos. And he explains that the painting is dying and you need to burn it down to cleanse the rot away, or something. I don't know, I usually skip through the dialogue. You head on up through the settlement, past more crow furries and through a graveyard where you meet Washing Machine Man again. This time, he's not acting quite as seductively, so you gently poke him with your sword until he drops the upstairs key and a sweet weapon. Upstairs, you meet Gail's niece, the painter, who's happy to see you, but doesn't seem to understand how the whole concept of painting actually works. Then, you run through this entire next area because you know the way and it's a total clusterfuck, before making your way into the basement of the chapel to slap away some mozzies and turn a wheel for another bit of DS1 fan service. 
Back upstairs, you leave Gale a voicemail telling him to join you in a bit and go down into the newly opened chamber to find Daddy Anal sat in his high chair enjoying his noodles. Frida says, Let him enjoy his noodles in peace, Ashen One, and blesses you with some feet pics for your thumbnail before sharpening her blade on your body. You take down Friday and Daddy A sings you a song and then holds his noodles everywhere. Round two, an Unk turns up for some fun and games too. You finally manage to knock the big lad out of his high chair, and it's all over. Oh, you thought? Ding ding, round three, and Frida is pissed. Whew, good luck with that one, eh? Gale miraculously manages to actually survive. You defeat the edgy non-cosplay lady, and this time, it actually is all over. GG. Treat yourself to a rest, and then grab the bonfire at the end of the room to travel to the start of DLC number 2, The Ringed City, where you find yourself in the Dreg Heap, an area where all the lands of the world are collapsing in onto each other. Basically, more fan service, but it looks cool though, so you drop down into the shit show, stopping off for some laser hair removal at Angel's Beauty Salon, before talking to definitely not Patches and running past everything else. A vision of Uncle Gale tells you to fucking kill yourself, so you dutifully obey, but sadly you survive the fall and have to deal with the miserable reality of your own existence, before you pop back to the salon to get rid of the last few stray hairs and kamikaze your way across what must be at least the hundredth poison area in a FromSoft game. Once again, thanks guys. You take out Pyromancer Zoe by exploiting her depressive tendencies. Zoe? Boy, they were really running out of names by this point. And get yourself a fabulous new outfit that shows off all your lady bits, before summoning I can't believe it's not patches, and attempting to take your own life again by dropping into the pit of pissed off demons. When the demons fall, they come together like spaghetti and meatballs to form the ultimate bowl of comfort food. If you find the idea of being stomped out by a flaming mega demon at all comforting. So you and this has to be patches, right? Snuff out his fires for good, before you grab the malnourished pigeon uber down to the ring city itself. Finally. Once there, you briefly chat to this weirdo who asks why you're here. Glad you asked mate, cause I have no fucking idea yet. He mentions something about getting the dark soul, and you're all like... And then, you leg it through the wonderful world of arrows, stopping briefly to grab a hat to complete your sexy outfit, and to wave at the big boy. Be seeing you in a bit, pal. Down in the ringed city itself, you do battle with a few heartburn boys and avoid the Beyblades before you talk to the knight Shearer, who tells you some basic lore stuff. Just hurry up for fuck's sake, I can hear them coming. Oh god, they're coming, just don't look back. Oh god, they're almost here, oh shit, oh fuck. You mash through her dialogue just in time to escape Chubby Checker and the fat boys. Make your way down the stairs of guaranteed invasion into the swamp to grab a cleansing face mask and up the ladder to talk to Big Butt McGee. Look mate, we've got the same head. <laughs> We're head brothers. You drop in on I'm pretty convinced this is Patches now for a chat, swat away the angry armour and sprint past another bunch of heartburn hobos before meeting Dick Eater Medea for the first time. A big bad throbbing purple dragon who likes to show off his underfloor heating to his guests. Beyond Medea, you bump into I fucking knew it was Patches who gives you a friendly nudge in the right direction, and then it's time for Mid-Ear 2, Return of the Mid-Ear. Dodge the fire, slap the claw, hide behind the rock, rinse and repeat. One last smack to assert dominance, and the big dragon is put back in his place. Well, for now. As the sequel did so well at the box office, mid is now officially a trilogy. So you grab some popcorn, buy some insurance, and drop in to say hello and enjoy the best dragon boss fight in the series. Medea is no joke, as he swoops and swings and slashes and spits fire and shoots lasers and does some other stuff starting with the letter S as well, but you duck and dodge and dive until the dick eater dragon is dead. Done. The heartburniest boy of them all kindly drops you the most ridiculous swords in the game, and then it's time to test your mettle in a scripted player invasion lazily disguised as a boss fight. With that out of the way, 
you head upstairs and meet Filianor, who says she wants an omelette. Of course, you can't make an omelette without breaking some eggs, so you duly oblige and then take a nap. Unfortunately, you oversleep and now it's the end of the world and everything's fucked. And what's even worse, that omelette is definitely going to be overcooked by now. You make your way outside to play in the sandpit and find your old friend Gale, who has spent the last trillion years on a diet of live pygmy protein shakes. He's still got room for dessert though and asks you for some pudding, but you don't want to give up your pudding to just anyone, so you roll around like an idiot while he hacks at you with his giant cake knife. After a while, Gale gets really mad and says Dark Soul again, just so you can do the whole thing once more, and then shows off his new and improved smoky barbecue flavour in the most anime fight of the entire series as he slingshots himself through the air, his cape whipping around him as lightning strikes pepper the arena. You trust in the power of your blade and take him down just in the nick of time and get your ultimate reward, the blood of the Dark Soul. Whatever that is. One last task, which is to head back in time because it's convoluted and return to the painter at Ariandel so you can give her her own dead uncle's blood from the future and she says, great, I'm gonna use this to make a new painting we can all live in and I'll name it after you. God, you're such a fucking weirdo, you know that? Well, that's it. Your Dark Souls journey has reached its end, Brave Hollow. I guess the only way to kill time now is to wait until the collapse of the universe for Elden Ring to come out. Or you could, you know, just do it all over again. Yes, indeed. Go on. As usual guys, thanks a lot for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, please give it a like, hit that subscribe button, and I'll catch you next time. Peace.